yesterday was a significant day for Juan Emeka Egbuka. Mm-hmm. Um, he has been a quiet leader on this, not only in the wide receiver room, not only on the offense, but in the team in general. He was one of these seniors, Corey, who could have mm-hmm. went to the NFL last year. Um, he probably would have went somewhere, I'm guessing, in maybe the fourth round, maybe third, if, if it, someone really liked him. If, if his measurables were good. Him. Yeah. yeah. Um, but third, fourth round, maybe fifth, if he dropped. But he decided to come back for his senior year, improve his stock, and be a leader in that room. Um, of course, mm-hmm. Jeremiah Smith shows up on campus and is all world. And in a day like yesterday where – you're missing your number your number three wide receiver, and you've, you're basically filling in that third receiver patchwork between a couple different guys. And they did and they did great, by the way. I thought they did fine. Um, mm-hmm. Emeka Ibuka shined. He absolutely mm-hmm. shined. And I I told Billy Bob I was on uh, on Billy Bob's backyard barbecue yesterday, Chris, before the games got going. Mm-hmm. I said, look for Emeka Ibuka to have a really good game. Jeremiah Smith is now four four games deep into this thing. He has made enough noise to where people know he is a force to be reckoned with. He's somebody who defensive coordinators are going to look to try to stop. And this is the perfect opportunity for Emeka Egbuka to do something big. And he absolutely did. Great day yesterday. Uh, nine, nine catches, 70-some yards, was it, Chris? Uh, three touchdowns. Nine, nine for 71 and three touchdowns. There you go. 7.9 uh, yards per reception. There you go. So, and then and then when it was all said and done, I decided, Corey, to take a look at where he's at in the record books. Mm-hmm. And so there are three major receiving records, career records, we're going to look at and f- see where his, his place is currently in those records. But first, I want to get your impressions on – what you feel he means to this team currently and for the remainder of this season and achieving our goals and just kind of your thoughts overall on a mecca book. I'll start with you, Corey, Chris, I'll let you go next. I'm going to go ahead and call it a bold statement. I guess I think he's actually more important to the team than even Jeremiah Smith is as much as I think Jeremiah Smith is the best receiver in college football. Like Chris has said many times, not because Jeremiah Smith isn't any good or because he lacks talent, obviously, but because of mecca, his steadiness, uh, as as a leader in the locker room, just a steadiness, and he's a he's a mentor to all the receivers. He's the only senior guy there, other than Jalen Ballard. But you know, Ballard doesn't have the playing experience that Ed Mecca does. So when before the season, I was talking to our good friend uh, B Moses from Buckeye Scoop over there. I said, "Look, Jeremiah Smith's going to be Randy Moss, and Mecca's going to be Chris Carter." when Randy Moss's first year, when Randy Moss is a huge playmaker, making just big play after big play, and that's what Jeremiah is kind of doing. And Mecca's steady Eddie. He, he just gets up five, six catches, 80 yards, a couple touchdowns or a touchdown, and that's what he's doing every game, it seems now. Uh, I think he's a, he's also becoming, obviously, a bit of a security blanket for Will Howard, which, why wouldn't he? He's, he's always open, it seems. Even when he's not open, he's open. Um, I just think he it meant so much when he came back because then your receiving core would be Carnell Tate with not a ton of experience, Brandon Ennis and Bryson Rogers, not a ton of experience, and then it'd be uh, Jeremiah Smith, zero experience going into the season. Yes, Jeremiah Smith has proven that he's able to handle it, but that would be a really young wide receiver core you know, going into the season. And Mecca, and Mecca coming back, to me, was every bit as big as everybody else who came back. JT, Jack Sawyer, uh, Trevin Henderson, everybody. Henderson means he, he's a top five player on this team, period, and he means a lot. And if we don't have him going forward, I don't even think we can reach the champion. Think about reaching the championship without him. Yeah, I, I agree. He's a critical player. And as much as I've been out here singing the praises of, of Jeremiah Smith, um, Corey's absolutely right. He's he's consistent. Mm-hmm. He uh, goes out there and he leads by example. He is somebody that these guys can look up to and, and see how the game is supposed to be played. He doesn't go out there and he's not a, a real vocal leader. Uh, you know, we, we saw Cade Stover, uh, who was a very vocal leader mm-hmm. um, last year. He's not a Cade Stover where he's going to get up in your face and start yelling. But you can just see that these receivers in this, in this receiver room have a certain reverence for him as, as kind of a mentor. Um, and I think he's what keeps this room grounded. He's what 
you know, the guy who can refocus these guys if they start to get a little, little shaken out on the field. Um, so I, I think he's very critical to this, especially if you're going to make a deep championship run. And, and another great point that Corey mentioned was he is that security blanket. He's that guy that, that's going to run those, those crossing patterns that may not be, you know, for the most yards, but he'll make that tough catch across the middle on a third critical third down when you need it. So I, I think he's, it's imperative that he stays healthy because I think that the, uh, the run to the championship is dependent on some of these key guys who came back staying healthy. Not only is his leadership in the locker room and on the field um, important to this team, but I think he's one of those guys who is a spiritual leader with the boys and his maturity level is, is far exceeds. I think what we've had in that room for a while and we've had some dogs come out of that room mm -hmm. right we're talking about marvin harrison jr uh we're talking about uh jackson smith and the jigba garrett wilson to me he is very much a chris olave kind of leader mm -hmm. a steady eddie mature i'm going to be exactly the same guy off the field that you see on the field uh i want to win i want to beat you uh, but I'm not going to sit here and, and, and be a prima donna wide receiver type of guy. Um, and I'm going to make a statement that might ruffle some feathers, but I'm not. It's just kind of what I do. I think he's a better leader than Marvin Harrison Jr. ever thought he was. Oh, agreed. I agree. Absolutely. I agree. Um, Marvin, I think Marvin's Marvin was at Ohio State to improve Marvin and get to the NFL. Emeka Ibuka might have some of the same goals in his career, but I think his desire to win the big one at Ohio State far exceeds anything that that we saw from Marvin Harrison Jr. And don't get me wrong, I love MHJ. Uh, I, I, he's he's great. Like he's an all time great at Ohio State. But as far as uh, being a Buckeye and bleeding scarlet and gray. I think Emeka Abuka, if you cut him open, you're going to see a lot of scarlet and gray coming out of him, man. Um, that's my two cents on that. Anything else before we jump into the records with him, guys? I think we all said it, man. He's we know how vitally important he is to this to this this program, this team, this season. Yeah, and you're right. You're you're right, Steely Matt. They, they're both him and Trey are both. I believe they're both ministers too. Yeah, I think they're both ordained. Along, along with Jack, uh, G. Scott Jr., mm -hmm. uh, I think he's an ordained minister as well. And I think this all goes back to a guy who we had on this show as a guest who we brought on, and, and Master Teague. Master Teague. Master Teague really did um, did a lot, I think, setting the stage for some of these guys to be more vocal about their faith. And CJ definitely helped that along as well. Yeah. yeah. Yes. He was definitely vocal. <laughs> Every yeah, time the guy's interviewed, he talks about yeah. it, right? Um. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Bucknuts. Uh, Olave runs so smooth. So the going joke here at the OHO podcast is that that Chris Olave was my sixth grade dancer. It was so smooth. It was. It was <laughs> what did you say? It was purple silk. It was a pil purple silk shirt that I had. I had matching skid purple and black skids. Guys, because it's a different era, okay? The young people are like, skids? What's he talking about? Trust me, they were fly. All right, another word from another era. Okay, let me let me pull open. So there's, there's three major career receiving stats. There's total receptions, mm -hmm. total receiving yards, and receiving touchdowns. Yesterday, Emeka Egbuka entered into the top 10 – uh, and, and by the way, he's in the top 10 now in all three categories. He entered into the top 10 for receiving yards yesterday. He now mm -hmm. has 2,290 receiving yards, which is good enough for 10. He's five behind number nine, which is Santonio San Holmes. So he's going to pass him with his next catch more than likely. Um, he's less than 50 from KJ Hill at number eight. And then there's a pretty big gap 
between that and number six, Devin Smith, who's at 2,500 and three yards. He'll get there as well, more than likely. The top five are Chris Olave at 27-11, Chris Carter at 27-25, Gary Williams at 27-92, another jump here, David Boston at 2,855, and number one is Michael Jenkins with 2,898. So a little bit of a quick math here. Let me pull out a calculator here on my computer. So Michael Jenkins at 2,898, and Emeka Ibuka is at 2,290. Uh, that's 608 yards away from being the all-time leader for receiving yards in Ohio State history. 608 yards. We have, what, seven regular season games remaining? And then, and, the play, and then at a least, possible at least, Big Ten championship yeah. game, and then the playoff games. So we have at least we have at least eight games remaining at the very least. Yeah. Yeah, okay. you've got a, the worst case of bowl game. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Troy. The last thing anybody was calling me was silky back in those days. Trust me. Uh, <laughs> however, uh, it was it was it was smooth. Um, does he get there? Mm -hmm. Does he get to number one? 608 to go. Yes, absolutely. He's going to get 80 yards and 90 yards a game. Yeah, he's going to get it. He's going to get it. Chris? Yeah, I, I agree. Barring some kind of injury, th this guy's got it wrapped up. I think we've really got – and this is the thing, guys. I think, honestly, you know, I would not be surprised if we don't have at least 10 more games. Yeah, so, I agree with that. Yeah. So I, I really think that he's got this one locked up. Okay, so that, that would be receiving yards. Um, let's move on to receiving touchdowns. So with 19, he moved into the top 10 again uh, uh, as of yesterday. Um, after his three on Saturday, he now has 19 total. He's tied with a, a bunch of people at, at 19 total. And then here's the, here's the top 10. With 20 at number nine is K.J. Hill. At 23 is Garrett Wilson with eight. Seven at 24 is Brian Robisky. That's a name for you. Mm -hmm. At six at 25 touchdowns is Santonio Holmes. I think all of that is achievable. I think mm -hmm. he can get six, seven more. Here's your top five. 27 touchdowns, Chris Carter. Uh, 30 touchdowns, number four, Devin Smith. At number three, with 31 touchdowns, Marvin Harrison Jr. Uh, with 34 touchdowns, number two, David Boston. And number one, with 35 touchdowns, the silk-wearing, smooth-as-ice Chris Olave. 19, he's not going to get He's not gonna get the 35, right? I, I, that would be just – and if he did, it would be incredible. Um, where do you think he falls on that list, guys? I think top five is plausible. Okay. Yeah. So that would put him at 28, 29, somewhere around in there. I could see another eight or nine this year for sure. Uh, if we, especially if we go into the playoffs. Yeah, I could definitely see another eight or nine. Okay. So top five, where do you got him at, Chris? Yeah. I, I mean, as much as you'd like to think that, I mean, if you think it's unfathomable, but with 15 games potentially, you know, and we'd have what, to at least 10 more left. Even if he goes one more a game, you know, he, he would be, I, I think he's top five, but I don't think he can get that. I mean, he would have to, he would have to have multiple games where he had multiple touchdowns and still average one in the games where he didn't have multiple just to get to that top five. That, that's, that'd be unheard of. I think he gets top five, but I don't think he gets any higher than that. Um, I'm going to settle where he ends up somewhere around 25. 26, which would mean he would be around six, just on the outside of the top five. Um, he has a couple more, th two, three touchdown games than than we're talking. We're gonna have to have yeah. a discussion. <laughs> yeah, th then we're talking top five easily. Um, so, yeah, so that's where he's gonna possibly land there. Okay, now on to the big one, um, th as far as I'm concerned with with him, and and that is total re uh, total receptions. Mm -hmm. So he was already in the top 10 already. Uh, he mm -hmm. was at uh, number nine, I believe. He was tied for ninth, uh, I think it was, with Corey Brown. 
At number 10, you have Paris Campbell with 143. Corey Brown sits at ninth at 145. Emeka Igbuka is now tied for seventh with Gary Williams with 154. At one catch ahead of him at sixth is Marvin Harrison Jr. Here's your top five. Michael Jenkins sits at number five with 165. Chris Carter, fourth, 168. Chris Olave, third, 176. David Boston is second, 191. And sitting at top of this list with 201 receptions in his career, K.J. Hill. Emeka Ibuka only needs, uh, if I do my math here, 47, 48 to become the neck, the number one owner of this record, career receptions at Ohio State. I think he's getting it, boys. I agree. I think it's very doable. I, I do as well. You look at him. I mean, if, if we go, especially if we go and we make a run towards the championship, like I said, 10 more games, you're, you're talking about, only averaging five catches a game. He's averaging six catches a game right now. And how many of these games has he not played the second half or the at yeah. least the fourth quarter in? Yeah. I mean, I I really believe that this is a record he's going to catch. Yeah, there's not going to be a game where we don't look his way. As long as he's healthy, there's no, there's and he's one of two main options for Will Howard. Carnell Tate sprinkled in there a little bit, but it's obviously become a safety valve. He's he's going to be getting. He's going to have some games where he gets eight, nine, ten catches. Well, he had nine yesterday. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> and and again, he I don't think he played the last two drives, right? Correct. Yep. So it's it's I think he's definitely getting this one. I, I the, to me the only question is how much does he break it and reset it? For me, yeah. It it takes a couple things to 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 do what he's about to do. Longevity. You got to play four seasons. You got to get on the field early. OK, he got on a little bit as a freshman and then he broke out, had a huge sophomore year. He had a down junior year, wasn't as good. And now he's coming back and repeating what he did as a sophomore, maybe even a little bit better. So it takes longevity. You have to get on the field early. You have to be in an offense that's going to look for you. Right. I mean, how many years did we have great receivers, but we, we ran the ball all the time, right? I mean, this was, Woody Hayes would have never had a wide receiver. And then this, the fact that Gary Williams is on this list is incredible. Okay. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, and that was, and I think Gary was more on, on, uh, uh, it was after Woody, wasn't he? Or was he at the end of Woody's career? He was, I, he may have been one of the crossed over between Woody and yeah. Earl. Earl. He might've played for both. I have to look into that. Um, he's the only one, everybody else on this list came Either Cooper era, Trestle, Urban, and I guess Day. If you look at Marvin Harrison Jr., you know, Alave as well as more more Ryan Day than it was Urban stuff like that. Garrett Wilson, yeah, there's some definitely yeah. some Day guys on there. But Day obviously has been the most prolific passing coach we've ever had in Ohio State history. That's a right. that's just is what it is. I wish Michael Jenkins could have played with some of the quarterbacks we have today. No kidding, right? Mm-hmm. I'm I yeah. So let me look real fast. I believe if I'm not mistaken, let's see. Yeah, okay. One more to look at. You, you know, while you're looking up what you're gonna look at, Eric, I, I just gotta say, can you imagine what his numbers would have been if we would have had somebody other than Kyle McCord at quarterback last year who would only look at Marvin Harrison to throw? Or if he would have gotten more than nine receptions his freshman year. Yeah, I think Mecca was know. also hurt a little bit last year, too, didn't he? He was hurt a little bit last year, yeah. too. But. It, I mean, yeah. I mean, it, we had a, a stalled quarterback year in between quarterbacks, obviously. Uh, just I feel bad for him getting hurt that year. But, yeah, I, I, well, who, was here was his fresh, who was here his freshman year? It was hard for him and Marvin to get onto the field. Well, sure it was. I mean, that yeah. was – 2021, so you had Olave and Garrett Wilson. Yeah, well, there you go. I, Garrett I forgot Wilson, they were Chris Olave yeah. and Jackson Jack, Smith and Jigba. Jackson Smith the Jigba. Yeah, and, freshman and, year, and the Jigba broke out pretty big that yeah. year. So there are two guys, two other guys, along with, along with, uh, along with Emeka, who are on all three of these lists. You want to take a stab at who they are? 
Chris Carter. Nope. No. Garrett Wilson. Nope. Dad gummit. Olave. That's one. Jenkins. Nope. Dang. Boston. K- KJ Hill. That makes KJ. sense. Yeah, KJ. Yeah. Yeah. Both played all four years. Yeah. Yeah. That's, That's right. Yep. It's pretty so, impressive. Boston did what he did only three years. <laughs> Yeah. Well, and then you look at Chris. Chris Carter only played two and a half years. That's a fair yeah. point. Yeah, a fair point. I mean, yeah, he, was injured, he was injured. He was injured a chunk of his freshman year too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he he had he in his limited play it was incredible. So what I'm getting at is if you take those three guys, Chris Olave, Emeka Buka, KJ Hill, order them for me. On, on who you would take first, second, or third if you're if you're a coach. Um, I'll go Alave, Amaka. Chat, I want to hear uh, your answers too, Chat. KJ, or, order those for me. Order those three guys for me. Who are you taking? Ekbuka, Olave, KJ Hill. What was yours, Corey? Alave, it was one. Amaka two, and KJ three. That's my list as well. Yeah, I would have to go the same way. Olave was. The best of, of all three, you know, or the best of all worlds, so to speak. I think that, you know, I love Emeka. He's, oh, yeah. he's awesome, no doubt about it. I love uh, KJ. KJ, too. KJ, yeah, KJ Hill, awesome, awesome guy. Uh, you know, great receiver. But I will say this with KJ, you know, it was like I don't think he had the explosiveness hmm. that the other two had. So I think that that was. I mean, and not that he was bad, don't get me wrong, you know, but he just didn't have the explosiveness or, or the it factor that the other two guys have. Everybody in the chat agrees with us completely. Mm-hmm. Everybody's got the same exact list. Olave now, won. Now, yeah, yeah. At the Chris, end of the I, year, <laughs> you're at the end of the year <laughs> if a Mecca, though, is holding the receptions record, the yards yeah. record, and is in, say, the top three, on touchdowns. Oh, then he's he overtakes. He's, he's got to surpass Olave, right? Oh yeah. man, that breaks my heart, guys. I love Chris Olave. Like that is my boy. But you're yeah. not wrong, Chris. You're not wrong. No. Like that's got to agree. That's that's something to look at. I love looking at these records and these stats and kind of putting them in perspective and looking at them historically and following them from game to game, it gives me another reason to kind of watch things during Mm -hmm. the game and root for different things. Here's another one for you guys. 